Algebra 2, Lesson 2.2, Solving the Absolute Value Equations, Practicing Problem Solving. In this set, we're going to go over problems from the content of Section 2.2 in our book, Solving the Absolute Value Equations. I'm going to go over the unknown problems in this set. First problem, solve. How many solutions does the equation absolute value of quantity x plus 7 equal 1 have? So the first thing we're going to do is look at this number on the right side. We see on the left side we have an absolute value expression. On the right side we have 1. We ask ourselves the question, is this a positive number? Answer to the question, yes. So we have two solutions. So we'll put two here. Next on our problem is three. How many solutions does the equation absolute value of quantity x plus seven equal negative one half? So we're going to look at that number on the right side and ask ourselves the question. Positive, I'm just going to put positive question mark. No. And the answer to that question means that, that there are not two solutions. Next question, negative. Yes. So, no solutions. Or zero solutions. We'll put zero here. Now, let's go ahead and logically figure out why our answer is zero. The absolute value of any number, what does what are the possible values for the absolute value of any number? Well, the minimum value is zero, so it has to be zero or greater than zero. So it is impossible for this thing on the left to be less than zero. So when you've isolated and have a number less than zero on the right, that is just flat out no solutions period. Let's go over the next fundamental problem. In this set, we're going to be solving each equation algebraically. So we have the absolute value of x equals 1 half. And again, just like in problem 1, we're going to ask ourselves what question? Is this a positive number? What is the answer to that question? Yes. So how many solutions do we have? Two. And those, those uh, equations we're going to set up by putting x is equal to 1 half. And then x is equal to negative 1 half. So I'm going to put our answers here in set notation x equals negative one-half, comma one-half, and that's it. Next under problem seven. We have five plus absolute value of x equals 14. I'm going to rewrite that on the right side. Five plus absolute value of x is equal to 14. The first thing we're going to do before we ask that question, we asked for problem 1, we're going to subtract 5 from both sides of this equation. So we get absolute value of x is equal to 9. Again, we ask the question, positive. Put 
pause with question mark. Yes. That's the answer. Two solutions. So we have either x is equal to 9 or, or and, x is equal to negative 9. And you can see if we substitute in negative 9 or 9 for x, the equation works out. So we have as our answers x equals absolute value of quantity, not quantity, absolute value of negative 9 will make this thing work and also absolute value of 9. Either one. Next unknown problem. 9. And I'm going to rewrite this expression over here. We have x plus 3 absolute value of quantity x plus 3 equals 10. Again, we look at that number on the right here and ask the question, positive answer, yes. So what we're going to have is x plus 3 is equal to 10 and also x plus 3 is equal to negative 10. And we solve each equation by subtracting 3 from both sides of it. So we have x is equal to 10 minus 3 or 7. And on this right equation, we have x is equal to negative 10 minus 3, which is negative 13. And then we can put negative 13 for x, check, or 7 for x. So we have as our answers x equals negative 13 comma 7. All right. Okay, next section there, solve each equation graphically. We have number 10 here. I'm going to go ahead to number 9. And this one's kind of weirdly written. It looks like we have these neg looks like negative two, negative four, negative six. I think that's kind of a graphical anomaly in this. So we're going to pretend like these are positive two, four, six, eight, so on. Okay, uh, I'm going to bring this over to the right here. Now. My instinct is to want to go ahead and solve this thing algebraically since we've been doing that from the beginning here. But let's, uh, we can graph this thing on the left equals 12, but we'll probably go up to 12, do we? I think I'm going to cheat on this one a little bit because I don't have enough room to put positive 12 up here. So I'm going to divide both sides by 4 first. So what we have is absolute value of quantity x minus 5 is equal to 3. So on the left side we have the, the standard form of an absolute value of the equation is f of x equals a times absolute value of x minus h plus k. And for the left side here, this absolute value of x minus 5, we have h is equal to 5 and k is equal to 0. So our vertex is going to be the coordinate pair 5 comma 0. So I go over here and put 5, 0. And after revising the equation to, to this one here, where we've already divided both sides, we have, we have a slope or a value of 1 over 1. So we can go up 
and the scale is the same in each instance, so we can go up. So it's going to be this kind of angle here, where we're going up two over two, or up one over one. So we're going to get this. Okay, and on the other side, the negative side, we're going to go up two over two, so we can do this. It's a little off. So that's one side. And on the right side, we have 3. So we go to 3. y equals 3. So this is going to be y is equal to 3. And look for intersection points. Well, right here, we have an intersection point at 2, comma 3. And over here on the right side, we have an intersection point at 8, comma 3. So our solutions for this are the x-coordinates x equals, we have 2 and 8. So I'm going to put this in set notation, 2, comma 8. The last thing I'm going to do before we move on from here is to substitute back into the original equation. If you have, uh, we put in 2, we'll get 4 times absolute value of negative 3, which is 4 times 3 equals 12. If we put in 8, we're going to get 8 minus 3, which is 3. 4 times 3 is 12. Check. So this will definitely be our solution set to problem number 11. Okay, the last part here is we have Leticia sets the thermostat in her apartment 68 degrees, the actual temperature in her apartment varied by this by as much as 3.5 degrees. Right now, so this, this is one of the things where you're trying to find a maximum minimum temperature, and, and really the easy way to look at this is sort of the common sense way. We know that we can go up 3.5 degrees or down 3.5 degrees. So our answer is going to be 68 degrees plus or minus 3.5 degrees. So uh, how are we going to write an absolute value equation that will get us this solution? Well, what we're going to have is absolute value of, of some value x minus 68 is equal to 3.5. And again, we and that is our equation. We ask ourselves a question. Is this positive? The answer, yes. So we have two solutions. So I'm going to come over down below. I'm going to rewrite this as, without the absolute value brackets. I have x minus 68 equals 3.5. And x minus 68 equals negative 3.5. And then adding 68 to both sides of the equation, we get x is equal to 3.5 plus 68. I'm thinking 71.5 degrees. Increase into, and this one on the right we have, we had also 68 degrees. And what we have is x is equal to negative 3.5 plus 68, which is going to be 64.5 degrees. So 
So minimum temperature equals 64.5 degrees. Maximum equals 71.5 degrees. Well, that's it. I hope this has been helpful to you. Good luck as always, and thanks for viewing.